a model of the cosmos, our solar system, and more in the ancient Greek Antikythera mechanism. And this is not an all-inclusive model. These videos are by uh, UCLA engineers that uh, have up to now believed that they know how these gears were working. Now you notice that they have the uh, path of the sun, the Olympiads, when the Olympic Games were to be held every four years, Mars, Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, and the moon. But uh, of course, there's no Earth orbit because the, this mechanism had the Earth as the center. Everything else was moving in relation to the Earth. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. This was found in the early 1900s in the island of the sea of the island of Antikythera in the Aegean Sea of Greece. Now, the Antikythera mechanism, the ancient Greek astronomical calculator, challenged researchers since its discovery back in 1901, and now split into 82 fragments, it's only a third of the original that survives. Can you imagine how many pieces were in this thing? Including 30 corroded bronze gear wheels, micro focus X-ray computed tomography or X-ray CT scans, in 2005 decoded the structure of the rear of the mechanism but the front remains largely unresolved. The X-ray CT also revealed inscriptions describing the motions of the Sun, the Moon, and all five planets known in antiquity and how they were displayed at the front as an ancient Greek cosmos. Inscriptions specifying complex planetary periods forced new thinking on the mechanism the mechanization of this cosmos, but no previous reconstruction has come close to matching the data. Our discoveries lead to a new model satisfying and explaining the evidence, and solving this complex 3D puzzle reveals a creation of genius, combining cycles from Babylonian astronomy, astronomy mathematics from Plato's Academy, and ancient Greek astronomical theories. Now, the Antikythera mechanism is a cultural treasure and grossed scholars across many disciplines. It was a mechanical computer of bronze gears that used groundbreaking technology to make astronomical predictions by mechanizing astronomical cycles and theories. The major surviving fragments of the Antikythera mechanism are labeled A to G and the minor fragments 1 to 75. They're partially damaged, corroded, covered in accretions, but they are rich, nevertheless, in evidence that a millimeter level at the millimeter level with fine details of mechanical components and thousands of tiny text characters as well, buried inside the fragments and unread for more than 2,000 years. So how did they put those text fragments tiny into, well, obviously they must have had microscope lenses. Now, the fragments are a 3D puzzle of great, com great complexity. In 2005, microfocus X-ray computed tomography or X-ray CT scan and polynomial treasure mapping or PTM of the mechanism's 82 fragments added substantial data. This led to a solution to the back of the machine where the discovery of eclipse prediction and the mechanization of the lunar anomaly the front remained deeply controversial due to the loss of physical evidence. Many unsuccessful attempts have been made to reconcile the evidence with the display of ancient Greek cosmos of the sun, moon, and all five planets known in antiquity. Now, uh, there's a lot of detail here. This is a very big article. It's uh, Creative Commons. Um, now, uh, the, the remarkable research notes by Rem described in Mind Planetarium with a ring display for the planets that anticipates the models were present here 
but mechanically completely wrong due to this lack of data. In the classic Gears from the Greeks, Price suggests lost gearing that calculated planetary motions but made no attempt at reconstruction. Then Wright built the first workable system at the front that calculated planetary motions and periods with a coaxial pointer display of the cosmos proving its mechanical feasibility. Now, it's not only that we have all these planets and the way they worked, we also have the elliptical orbits. Now here we show created discussion results, creating gear display with respect to inscriptional evidence, the ring system with nine planets, nine outputs, the mood, moon, nodes, Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and date, carried by nested tubes with arms supporting the rigs. The rings and the result is a radical new model that matches all the data and accumulates with the elegant display of the ancient Greek cosmos. With so much missing, we ensure the integrity of our model with a strict set of reconstruction principles. Now, uh, going back to this, if you look at the inscription evidence, it says, the inscription evidence, uh, star events, eclipses, glyphs, eclipse characteristics, cosmos description, calendar structure, moon, sun cycles, planetary cycles. I mean, take your pick. It's just unbelievable. Now, let me show you the inscriptions. Okay, so here we are, some of the inscriptions. You can see how tiny they are. Uh, this, if you want to know, because I've seen this in the uh, Archaeological Museum in, in Athens, this box is just about the size of a shoe box, you know, like a size 10 to 12 shoe. That's how big this thing is. It's not very big. Um, and all of these things are uh, crusted by, what can, what can you say? They're basically rusted cr and crusted with uh, sea salt or something. Um, and uh, you can see the very, very, very fine inscriptions on every single line. And here they have line numbers and letters. I can't read what it says. But uh, they went into trouble of doing this. Now, I spoke to some people concerning their ideas of this. And I said, look, for them to do, to go into all this trouble, and you can even see the details of the... Uh, period relation for Antikythera mechanism, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, error rate, three decimal points. Some of them are four decimal points, error rate. I mean, that is really precision, really precision. So why did they go into all this trouble of making these devices? This is not the only one. This was a small shoebox type of a thing that you can carry around with it. Obviously, this was sunk with a ship and where somebody took it with them, where were they taking it? Who was this person? But you can imagine if the, the bigger ones and the more elaborate ones, uh, how um, more precise it could have been. And remember, this, was only, this is only a third of what it had. Okay? Four decimal, five decimal points precision. And I was asking, I said, for them to have these things, it meant that they must have known the at, at any point in time where these planets were in relation to our Earth. As we said, it was a geocentric system. This was a geocentric system. Supposedly, this is in relation with to the Earth in the middle. It doesn't mean anything. I mean, you can have some system having the moon in the middle and everything else, you know. But uh, they also had very big precision concerning the elliptical orbits. Look at this. Some teeth were even smaller to, to, uh, to uh, uh, make it perfect, the perfection of the elliptical orbit properly um, geared. Now, theoretical mechanisms for our model. Okay, this is a lot, a very, very uh, detailed thing. These are some of the images of what shows the long pillars, short pillars. Look at these things here. This is what it looks like in the museum. And this is the x-ray um, of some of these areas. OK. Look at this. We're here. 
and uh, look at these very strange teeth here very strange some of these dials and uh, all these elliptical components for venus showing the crucial component suggesting that there are two gears in fragment d okay and mechanisms between straps and things this you see of course look at this and again this is only a third of what was there okay now the dragon hand indicates eclipses by it's closer to the true sun pointing at new or full moon closest to node defines the sophisticated eclipse prediction scheme on the Antikythera device with systemic limits for lunar eclipses, asymmetrical limits for solar eclipses, according to whether the moon is north or south of the node. These wider and narrow limits are indicated by triangles on the true sun ring. And when the dragon hand is within the relevant limits, the eclipse prediction glyph can be found on the Saros dial. Indexing of synodic events. Um, the Antikythera mechanism index eclipse descriptions to the Saros dial for synodic events, maximum elongations, stationary points, conjunctions and oppositions occur when the planet is at a characteristic angle from the sun. And by turning the mechanism, we note the sun's position of the planet's ring for each synodic event. Uh, now, a very, very, very detailed planet venus for example the following direction zodiacs uh, after the conjunction of the sun what happens elongation in 224 days it approaches the sun it arrives at the evening station between distant from the sun it approaches the sun by way of advance and conjunction to the greatest elongation in another 62 days morning station advancing standing away from the sun in 49 days regressing to the greatest morning elongation, elongation approaches the sun. All this was written there. I'm just, talk, I'm just talking about Venus, okay? Why did, they, why did they have to know how close Venus was to the sun or away from the earth when it would be standing away from the sun or closer to the sun? And in how many days, the greatest elongation, another 68 days, it says uh, the... Uh, the sun, the conjunction with the sun, it regresses greatest elongation in 224 days. Why did they have to know about every single planet when it was close toward the earth, close to the sun, when it was farther, when it was, I mean, uh, okay, the, some person I was talking to about this said, oh, they had nothing better to do than did this. No, I don't believe this because they just had nothing else to do that they had to do this. I believe that they had to do this because they had such an intense interest in the solar system because they had flight, inter-solar uh, flight, interstellar flight. We know this from the Greek texts. Even the ship of the Argonauts, Argo, is said to have been a spaceship. I mean, even today we call it a craft or a ship because, you know, we use the word ship. But it doesn't mean it's you know floating on the water. It's uh, it flying in the air. So uh, obviously, this I'm sure has something to do with the technology that they had. And remember these tiny, tiny letters. And I'm going to do another video on the um, uh, uh, a war a Greek warrior's ring that they found in uh, the Peloponnese, and it was so tiny. Uh, that was inscripted on an agate. You know, agate is not diamond. I mean, it couldn't break or crack. How did they do that? Well, you're going to see this in the next video. But obviously, the technology that they have is really advanced. We don't even know how they did this. Why they did it? Why they did this? I, for my uh, humble opinion, is that they had to know the exact position of every single star in our solar system at any point in time in relation to the Earth because they had interstellar flight. They had space flight. That's why. It was, uh, let's say, Atlantean technology. Okay? Now, this was, uh, the contributors are various, uh, uh, as you'll see, various universities. From what I understand, these things here are, uh, most of them are from, uh, I can't even see it. 
uh, UCLA in London. That's UCLA. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, the cited articles are from um, various universities and engineers having to do with these studies. Okay, this is Creative Commons licensed by four, four and uh, reprinting permission is here. And I'll leave the link below. You can see the details on your own. Basically, it's from University College London and Environmental and Geomatic Engineering University College of London and UCL Qatar University College London, Doha, Qatar. I didn't know University College had a, a um, department in Qatar. Okay. So, and also Science and Technology, Archaeology, Cultural Center, the Cyprus Institute in Nicosia, Cyprus. Um, this is amazing. And it's only a third of what was there. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.